Hey, what's up, guys? So, um, I'm doing a very quick, uh, video review of Graphene OS. So, the reason I'm doing this is just there's absolutely no other video reviews I can find of this OS, so let's just get started. Um, so this is the boot process if you've already installed it. Um, a few things to know about this OS right off the bat. It only runs on Google Pixel devices securely as of now. Someone could technically take the open source software and develop it on something else, but right now if you just want to run it off the box, you have to have a Pixel. And the only Pixels I really recommend it right now to go out and buy for this is a Pixel 3a like I have here, or a um, Pixel 3 or 3XL I suppose. Um, anyway, right off the bat, so that's the boot, is pretty standard. Um, yeah, you're going to want to enter in your password once you're in the OS. Okay, so anyhow, once in the OS, initializing it, um, okay, so this isn't the stock install, but I can still do the review of what I have here. So... Basically, to, to get started, the OS itself, um, it's basically just exactly like stock Android in terms of the GUI. Android 10, that is, to be specific. Um, so yeah, you're gonna have all your normal widgets, you know, normal controls, all that. Um, this is not stock Android, though. There's a few differences. Um, firstly, there's no Google Apps anywhere on this phone by default. Um, that, that means no YouTube, no Google Maps, nothing. Also, there's no background Google Play services, which allow those apps, plus a lot of other apps such as uh, Snapchat um, and a few other things that require those services to function. In fact, even apps such as uh, Discord and Reddit, for example, may run without Google Play services, but the features such as notifications are disabled due to the fact they use Google push notification servers. So, just know app support is going to be a little bit iffy on this platform just because so many apps use some sort of Google Play services and without them may flat out not run at all or otherwise. Um, this is unlike Android ROMs such as um, Micro G, which use alternatives to um, Google Play services to get around that. This does not make any attempt at that and instead just wants to be completely secure. So. That there's a lot more focus on security than usability in this ROM. Um, case in point, all these apps above the bar here, um, these are literally the only apps that come pre-installed on it. Um, some notable apps are Vandium, which is the web browser, which is a Chromium-based browser that has all Google features removed and has some hidden security. And uh, basically just some other basic apps such as the camera, which can't even take it full advantage of the hardware due to the fact that it's not yet fully developed. And some, uh, you know, just like Messenger and Auditor to like just verify the um, status of the OS being secure if you have another phone to pair it with. And yeah, basically that that's it. Um, so because the basic app support is so limited here, um, you're going to want to install some other apps and... Fun fact, this phone also does not have any other app stores, so you're going to have to end up installing your own app store. Because of that, I have a few apps down here I recommend to anyone who is trying to use this OS. Um, firstly, F-Droid. This is an app store that has a focus on only free and only open source apps. That's all that's on there. There's a lot of good stuff on there, but you probably can't get absolutely everything you would need. But you can get a lot of things. I've gotten things such as a... Uh, Weather app, I've got in, you know, a Reddit client you can find on there. Um, I found this, which I'll explain in a second. Yeah, there's all sorts of things you can find on f -Droid. It's definitely worth checking out. Um, so another thing you want to do, because I'm assuming everyone, or at least a lot of people, are stuck using a lot of mainstream apps that you really can't get on open source platforms. Um, so the second thing you're going to want to get if you're using Graphene OS is the Aurora Store which is a, um, a open source implementa implementation of the um, Google Play Store. Yeah, basically it just uses some stuff to get around, um, you know, they'll sign in and it allows you to download apps and 
basically privately up them, update them and stuff. Um, so that's a good way to get things like Reddit and Discord and etc. and keep them updated. Um, some other apps, if you have a Google and all that, is um, the Bromite web browser is better than the default one because it has an ad blocker. Um, sadly, it does not support extensions and neither does Vandium. So, also Firefox is good if you want to have like extensions and stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, admittedly, the creators don't recommend that, but it's kind of necessary just because you can the um these browsers are just so limited, even though they have the hooded security that Firefox does not. Um, moving on, so this app, because it only has these 15 or so default apps, it's missing some basic apps you would think any phone would have, such as a text editor, so I don't have any specific one to recommend, but Marker here is an okay one. I just, you know, turn off the networking of it, so it can't send stuff out online, even though it's a free and open source app, just to be sure I do that. Um, you know, also private messaging, you can install um, an instance of uh, Talks, one of the variations of their apps. Um, also something you're probably going to want is a music player, um, Vinyl, this is one I would definitely recommend. It's just, it's a very good music player, it does everything you need it to, you can install mp3s, etc. Um, and finally, uh, Ubuot or some other variation of a VPN might be recommended, although Ubuot is not a VPN, please note, that's um, an implementation of Tor. Uh, it uses basically Tor as if it's a VPN, in terms of it just wires all your t traffic through there, so like, if you want your networking to be secure on top of having this secure phone, I'd recommend something like this. Um, so yeah, overall, it's just a very basic OS. It does a lot of the things you need, but there's still things such as, you know, if you need Snapchat or whatever, it's not going to work on here just because it has no play services. Uh, even things like Maps, I have i can't find any apps that are really great for doing navigation on this phone, so just know there's some sacrifices you're going to have to make if you want to go completely free, completely open source, or at least, you know, with your OS, and just avoid Google. However, though that being said, this is probably the most private phone and private operating system that currently exists on the market, so I'd recommend trying it out. Um, some other things to note about the OS, um, it is Android 10 based, as you can see, um, and it, yeah, it's updated on its own paths, it doesn't have anything Google. Um, yeah, that's it. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, this is not the greatest video, but it's probably the first CPU that exists. So, yeah, if you can make something better, please feel free to. All right.